Howdy. Hey, welcome back. It's been a little bit since you've seen us. Unfortunately, Joel's been sick, so we're taking a pause to get him back in good health. And here we are. And I'm sick and tired <laughs> of being sick and tired. Yes, yes. We got some stuff going around. Though. But I've been getting uh, windows in the morning where I feel okay. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, and then, ooh. Yeah. yeah. No fun. No, nobody likes to be feeling under the weather. All right, so today's topic is? Jesus declaring he is God. Yeah. So we know that um, there are several names um, that are attributed to God as well as Jesus. And yeah. um, the back of my Bible actually shares a number of them. So I encourage you to look them up online if your Bible doesn't also have an index for that. But the other thing I want to share is I used to have, it's packed away in storage right now, but I used to have this large laminate fold up uh, publication, if you will. And in that had all the different names of Jesus and of God and it went into describing each one. So it's quite a lovely, I think it's actually like a teacher's aid, but it's quite a lovely tool if you ever. Such as? I am the Lord Yahweh. Yeah. I am the Lord who heals El Shaddai, yeah. God Almighty. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Yep, yep, yep. Lots of them. Yeah. So today we're going to kind of focus on where Jesus, or God, proclaims that I am. Mm, I am. Yep. So we love that. Yeah. All right. So are you ready? He's, he's ready. He's ready. He's ready. Are you feeling out of sorts because you're sick? Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling out of sorts and I'm not sick. So there we go. We're going to just push right through it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start in Exodus 3. Uh, I have in my notes verse 14. So I'm actually going to start with 13 because this is where Jesus, uh, excuse me, Moses and God are having a conversation. And then Moses asked God, this is verse 13, if I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me, <laughs> and they ask me, what is his name? What should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also says to Moses, say this to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is how I am to be remembered in every generation. So just to add on to that, I was reading that scripture a couple months ago, and the reason I believe that he left off anything after I am, Tell them I am. Because if he had said I am all, that would have left him into our understanding or our imagination. Mm. I can only imagine so much. I can My understanding only goes so far. But for him to leave it open-ended, open-ended I am, that is... Yeah. And in my research, I found a little tidbit that I want to share too, is that um, in Hebrew, I am, like am, is first person singular of a verb, which means to be. Mm. So I thought that was quite special. Mm. All right, then we're gonna migrate over to Isaiah. I'm gonna do a couple Old Testament scriptures with you. Probably should have done something a little different with my hair here. Okay. So we're going to be in Isaiah 42, verse 8. I'm just going to go back to verse 7 here for a second and just see. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, if we go back to verse 6. Okay. And um, let's go back to verse 5. <laughs> she could go all the way back to verse 1. I don't, I but I was trying to summarize it a little bit for <laughs> I want to set the context, that's all. This is what God, the Lord says, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, 
who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. Verse six, I am the Lord. I have called you for a righteous purpose and I will hold you by your hand. I will watch over you and I will appoint you to be a covenant for the people and a light to the nations in order to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon and those sitting in darkness from the prison house. Verse eight, I am the Lord, that is my name, and I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. So con contextually, the I am, when, when Moses in Exodus said, when God said, tell them I am, there's no recording of Moses actually telling them that his name is I am. It doesn't record it in Exodus. So here is a spot. I mean, obviously Moses did tell them that his name is I am. It's just not recorded in Exodus. But there's different spots where it declares God is, his name is I am. Or one of his names. But this is I am the Lord. That is my name. That's pretty clear. Yeah. Pretty clear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to pivot to the New Testament. And this is where, we're gonna go into Mark 14. And this is where uh, Jesus faces the Sanhedrin. And um, this is where I feel like it starts to ramp up a little bit mm -hmm. with our message today. So I'm gonna start in verse 60. Then the high priest stood up before them all and questioned Jesus. Don't you have an answer to what these men are testifying against you? But he kept silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest questioned him, are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? Verse 62, I am, said Jesus, and you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What is your decision? They all condemned him, condemned him as deserving death. Mm. So this is where Jesus, uh, he says, I am. And they all know that God's name is I am. Yeah. And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. This is a... So this is building up. This is building up to the big punch here. <laughs> so then, um, let me read some of John 8. Okay. And then you've got uh, a couple things to read. Yeah. Okay. So in John 8, just a few more spots where Jesus says, I am. And John 8, chapter 12 through 14. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The, Phar the Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then um, uh, verse 18, he says again, I am one that beareth witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. And then in verse 24, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am, ye shall die in your sins. And then in 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. So this is many times where people could have not paid attention, or we could not pay attention, but when Jesus says, I am, like at the end of this verse, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. That's him declaring that he is God. Yeah. 
And I think what's so beautiful about that, I actually wanted to read the commentary out of the Tony Evans Bible on, in regards to 58, if I could. Okay. But I think what's so beautiful about the proclamation of I am is that it's knowing it's, uh, even though Jesus as man, right, he's the perfect man, he knows his identity in Christ. And it's like such an example for us that our identity is in Christ. So that's, mm. that's what kind of resonates with me in particular when I read I am statements in the New Testament. Yeah. Um, so the commentary I just wanted to share with you because this may, this may help to uh, expound on it. This is one of Jesus's most profound claims to deity in the Gospels. He didn't say before Abraham was, I was, but mm. I am. Yeah. The former wording could be ambiguous and misunderstood, but not the latter. Not only was he claiming to have existed in Abraham's day, but he was also claiming divine identity. When Joseph, when Moses, not, not Joseph, <laughs> when Moses called God his name so that he could tell the Israelites who had sent him to them, God responded, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you, right? And that goes back to Exodus 3, 14 that we shared with you. Thus, Jesus identified himself as the God who had spoken to Moses. Mm. I just love that. Just mm. ties everything together. Mm. Hand in glove. Mm. Love that. All right, so I'm gonna read a couple of scriptures that describe um, the voice of God prior to reading the last of the I am of Jesus. And so in Psalms 29, one through four, give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Mm -hmm. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful. It thundereth. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. So the voice of the Lord, great strength in the voice of the Lord, which we're going to see represented here in John. So in John 12 is where Jesus says the shortest but one of the most beautiful prayers, a simple, simple prayer, but powerful. And it is responded to by God. In John chapter 12, verse 28, Jesus says, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. So just to give a representation of what it sounds like when God speaks from heaven, let alone speaking right in front of you. So in John chapter 18, this is a, this is a special, special one for me. And uh, so when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden in which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men, a band of men is between 300 and 600 men. That's what a band of men is. I had always thought that a band of men, uh, 12, 12 guys, you know, 20 guys maybe. But no, it's in the Matthew Henry commentary that Alex was going to read. It, he says between 500 and 1,000. But when I looked up a band, it said between 300 and 600. And, and where did he get that band of men from? Knowing that the Jews at that time had no military, they had no army. Uh, more on that maybe later. 
Jesus, Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. You got to see these men coming, right? They're not coming for a tea party. They're going to potential battle. Although they have the overwhelming force, they're still going to grab somebody. And uh, that's not like something that people would take lightly. So most likely their adrenaline was rushing. They're in a group of men, their tent, lanterns and torches and uh, weapons. Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him went forth and said unto them, whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. You can imagine these men and how they came to him. I don't see them coming politely. It wasn't a tea party. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am. So in some Bibles, it just literally leaves it as I am. Some it'll have, I am he. But when Jesus says, I am, you have to, it, and let me just read this. And, G, and Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And as soon as, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am, they went backward and fell to the ground. I think this is the moment when the voice of God came through Jesus in thundering and power for these men to have fell backwards to the ground. They had, they had experienced the voice of God. <laughs> then Ask he them again, whom seek ye? And then you have to understand that there was probably a great change in their tone and attitude. And it probably sounded more like this. And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. They had just experienced the presence of God. If they had never experienced the presence of God, at that moment they did. At that moment they did. They experienced grace and mercy because he could have wiped them all out. And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am. If therefore you seek me. And when he said, <laughs> this, is, this could get read right over. If therefore you seek me, he just declared himself God. If you seek me, God. Mm -hmm. Let these go their way. That's just a powerful, powerful understanding of the name of Jesus, the power in the name. There's been times when I've just called out, Jesus! And the atmosphere changes. There's great power in the name of Jesus. Today we got to share with you about Jesus declaring he is God. Thank you for joining us.